witnesses Our generation, this world and nation Make us one in you Oh, what that means that when something has happened whether it's what they did or what we did and we bear it and we're not able to talk with the person or we're not able to somehow get a reconciliation oh the burden of that becomes so tough doesn't it yes. uh, we just carry it and I've often thought of the the wonderful story from the movie the mission did you ever see the movie the mission yeah. it was a great movie and um, but one of the scenes that stands out to me was the thing with Robert De Niro uh, it starts out that Robert De Niro is a, um, a slaver. He's going off to the Indians in, I guess it's Paraguay or wherever they are, and uh, he's making slaves. He's breaking in with his armament and everything, and he's making slaves of people, you know, like that. Well, something happens, and the movie just kind of touches on it in a neat way. Something happens where he has a conversion. And he's deeply aware of the fact that his whole life has been wrong. He, he shouldn't be a slave trader. He, he was treating people as things, and he was more concerned about the money and the prestige. And, and so he, you know, I, I'm sorry. And so he, he really admits his sinfulness. But somehow there's something to be paid, something he's got to do. And in a marvelous scene, um, remember, he got all of this armament, his sword and his, you know, the chest protector, the metal thing in his helmet and, and all the metal things that he had. And he put it all into a sack, you know, kind of a satchel that he kind of tied up together. And then he put it on a rope. And then he climbed, he climbed, started climbing this uh, waterfall. And, and it was going up to the top of where the Indians were, the ones that he had the ones that he had taken as slaves. And the, I mean, he was the hated person. And you, you're struggling with him, you know, as he's pulling up this, this, oh, this lug of big, you know, this, all this metal like this, and gets up and he gets another level, and you, you see his hand going, ah, and he pulls up, and, you know, when the movies can do that real well, but it, it was really great. So he's, he's climbing up, and oh, he's getting up there, and he just gets up to the top, and oh, he's just to the top, like this, you know, and he, and he looks up, and there's the chief of the Indians, <laughs> the chief of the people that he had just, you know, just ravaged by, by taking them all into slavery. And very, very solemnly, the, the Indian pulls out a knife. And you think, oh my gosh, he's going to get that, you know, he's going to get his price of blood. He's going to go into that guy. And he lifts the knife. And what does he do? He cut the rope. <laughs> He cut the rope, and in, 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 in a marvelous scene, you hear that clatter, clink, clop, 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 of all of that metal going down, going down over the cliff, and then just landing there. And then you come back, and you can see De Niro looking up at this, this kind of much smaller and seemingly weak person. And you say, wow. There's, there's the example of that burden of sin, that burden of unforgiveness, it really needs to be cut if ever we're going to be able to find peace or freedom in our life. And, and it was such a, such a strong statement. You, you remember that? Those of you who saw the movie, you know, it's, it's a wonderful thing. But I think of that. Um, gosh, we can, have, we can have so much. We can just be bearing things. I got to tell you a personal story. Um, I, uh, I've been working in television for a long time, and I'm a member of a community called Divine Word Missionaries. And many years ago, we were called together to talk to all of our superiors. They were provincials from, we have three provinces in the United States, and the provincials were there. And we, as the communication people, were, come, were asked to come and make a report from the three different provinces. Well, I can remember I was all set, and I had written out my report. I'm nervous about having to make, make an exta a statement. And we were all together in this room, and suddenly the, the man from one of the other provinces, a man that I've known, and we were in the seminary together for a long time, he stood up, and in front of everybody else, he just started to lambast me. And he just directed everything at me, not, nothing about what he was doing. And he told me you know, what, how wrong I was doing, how I was preaching in the wrong way, how the quality of my television work was so poor, and he was, he was ashamed of what I was doing, you know, in the, in the quality of that. And he went on 
for about 20 minutes, and I can remember the, the, you know, the quivering of his lips you know, as he kind of spoke, and he just totally humiliated me, you know, just totally humiliated me in front of all these other people. And I was, honestly, I was totally shocked. I, 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 didn't, know, I didn't know what to say. You know? And he went on and on, and then he sat down, and I'm just, you know? And I, instead of responding to him, I, I didn't know what to say, so I just kind of opened up the folder of my own things, and I, I read my report of, of what I was doing, finished that, and then the, the other person from the third province got up and did that. But, oh, you can imagine what that did to me in terms of anger and frustration and pain that they did that to me in public, you know, yeah. in, front of my, in front of the superiors, you know, everything like that. And I just bore that burden, and we went away. And I got to tell you, it probably was 10 years, you know, that just the burden of that, of just not knowing, well, how can I get back to him? Or, do I even want to get back to him? Because I'm thinking all these negative thoughts. Of, why would he do such a thing like that? You know, granted, I can improve my productions and whatnot, and there are things that I need to be better at. Oh, no, dang, dang that. But just to come out such with such vehemence and and, and venom in the presence, and I and I bore that. And, oh, it was a heavy burden. You know, it was a heavy burden, and I just didn't know what to do with the the pain that I felt at the rejection and the suffering that was caused. Well, summer before last, uh, I had gone back to our uh, major seminary place, which is in Chicago uh, in the States, and I was doing a television program with a producer. We were getting, trying to get in touch with the various levels of what, it, what our formation is, our college, our novitiate, our, uh, our major theology and whatnot. And so we were at the major, major seminary house, and um, we were f for Mass. And, I, and I'm sitting at Mass and uh, getting ready for Mass, and I look up, <laughs> and who was going to be celebrating Mass but this priest? You know? And boy, my heart started beating because I hadn't talked with him because we were you know, far away from others. And I thought, oh, dear. So I went back, and I went back into the sacristy, and I said, hi, brother, how you doing? And he said, oh. Oh, he said, hi, Mike, how are you? And, you know, just kind of, oh, how are you? Yeah. You know, we just kind of bannered back and forth and, you know, like this. And I said, oh, great. And they said, listen, I'm not going to celebrate. I'll just sit out there. He said, okay, yeah, yeah, good to see you, Mike. <laughs> and I went, honestly, I, I'm, I'm kind of sitting on eggs. And you know what he did? He walked out and he was, he was talking to all the, the, uh, the major seminarians of the group. Uh, 20 minutes? He was talking to all the, the, the major seminarians. And, and he said, before we start Mass, we're really honored to have Mike Manning here. Uh, Mike has been working in television for so long, and he's been going against all kind of odds, but he's really been committing himself to the vision. So we're really thankful as an SVD that he's doing this great work. Mike, keep up the great work. <laughs> wow, that was a moment, huh? You know, that was a powerful moment. Then afterwards, we, we went to Mass, and we were just kind of sitting, and we just kind of bannered, and we didn't get back to that, that moment. I didn't even need to do that. But there was all of a sudden that level of, of acceptance and friendship that wasn't there before. And I thought, oh, that's what life is about, finding those moments when we can be reconciled with people that have hurt us so deeply, and just finding peace with that. You know? um, we're not probably going to be best friends for, you know, and that's not the point, but there was a growth, and there, there, was, there was hope. And so I say to you, in terms of forgiveness and the burden of forgiveness, it's important to remember those kind of things, you know, that we go through, you know? Stirring us a passion to be your witnesses Our generation, this world and nation Make us one in you Clothe us now